Hi, welcome to the third lecture on connectedness, part of topology series. In this lecture, what I plan to do is to complete the proof of the connectedness of a closed bounded interval AB. I started the proof and I even said I have completed the proof, but there is a point which I mentioned in the thing which I have to clarify. And after that, we will look at some subsets of R2, check whether they are connected or not connected. Okay. With this, we will stop. Okay. This will be a very short lecture, hopefully, and it will be followed again by another lecture soon. So let us get started. Yeah. So, right. So I am going to keep the notation of the last lecture. So I have AB, and this is. And I have set U, which is open in AB. U is not equal to empty, and right. Then it's also open as well as closed. So we wanted to prove U equal to AB. This is what we wanted to prove. So for this purpose, we constructed this set AB, set of all x in this, so that A x is contained in U. We assume the loss of generality A is in U right then I said it's enough if I prove B is in E okay enough to show right so what we did was we let C to be a little B of E we proved two things C lies in AB and uh, C belong to uh, C equal to B okay these are the two things we proved okay and we also proved c belong to u to complete the proof i have to show c belong to e this i have to prove i forgot to prove that okay even though i said this one since c is b it's enough if that is i'm saying b is in e okay how do i prove that it's again using lv so you will see how many times i have to use lv nature so let's see with the LEB of E, let's look at C minus 1 by N. Then this is not an upper bound. Therefore, there exists an XN where in E. With what property? C minus 1 by N is strictly less than XN, and XN is less than or equal to C because C is an upper bound, right? Right. Now, notice that since XN belongs to E, that means AXN is contained in u that therefore a c minus 1 by n is contained in u because that's con this is contained in this right therefore union of this a c minus 1 by n is contained in u as n varies over n but this is nothing other than a to c c open to prove this you need archimedean property yeah. unless your real analysis is good you will think it's obvious okay but to prove that i need a okay archimedean property okay. right so i have shown that a to c is contained in u i also know c is in u therefore this shows a to c is contained in u but c is b that means a to b is contained in u and u is contained in this therefore equality holds okay this completes the proof Pause, review, proceed. Now let's look at subsets of R2. Okay. The, my first example is let's look at uh, the rectangular hyperbola. okay that is given by x y equal to 1 it could be any c but let us take for simplicity let me take x y equal to 1 therefore the picture is like this and this was our motivating example if you notice therefore all of you know that the, this is not connected okay my subset a is this or you call it h okay h is a subset of r2 
I want to show it's not connected right how do I do that okay as you know this is one piece this is another piece so this tells me let us look at I want to say let us look at the subset u where it is set of xy in the hyperbola as a subset of hyperbola so that x is positive that means I am looking at this this is my u right I claim this is open in h of course also closed in h okay this is open in h why that's because let us look at in r2 let us look at the subset of x y in r2 so that x is positive this set is open in r2 okay why this is open in r2 okay again by intuition you can see that all these things which are here this is y equal to zero these are the point right but the easiest way is if you had understood my uh, after closed sets ca ca characterization of continuity in terms of closed set i said how one can use continuous function to prove certain subsets are closed or open now i can do that let us look at the function f from r2 to r and x y going to x this is continuous right and let's look at the set 0 to infinity as a subset of this look at it f inverse this is precisely this set because all the x coordinates must be positive because the, this means x y belong to this that that is equal to only f f of x y is in 0 infinity that is x is in 0 infinity that is x is positive okay so therefore that's open okay therefore let us call this uh, gives a name let us call this as v so this set v is open okay that is a right half plane v is one usually calls it right half plane okay this is open where in r2 now what is v intersection my hyperbola it is the one half of the hyperbola in the first quadrant okay that is my u therefore we have proved u is open in h the subspace topology yeah similar reason similarly what do you think i can do you can also see this you call this as u dash it is not a complement okay you will call it if you want this is u this is u minus then u minus is also open what is u minus u minus is set of all x y in the hyperbola so that x is negative then this is also open h since this is open in h and h is design union of u and u minus this is a design union and both are open that means u is open as well as closed because its complement is open right and it's non empty because one one belong to u and u is not equal to all of h because minus one minus one belong to u minus yeah therefore i will produce a subset u which is not empty which is not h but u is open and closed therefore what can i conclude i can conclude that u h is not connected similar proof you can use for any hyperbola whether rectangular hyperbola non-rectangular hyperbola you can see the similar argument okay similar arguments any hyperbola is is not connected so pause review proceed
now let's look at other non degenerate conics see this is one of the conics right yeah so for example i can look at a circle i can look at uh, an ellipse i can even look at a parabola right i you will see that all of them are going to be connected we shall prove all of them are connected yeah how to prove that that's a very interesting thing okay the fact is if f is a continuous map from x to y continuous and f is connected okay and if f of x equal to y then o is connected okay let me call it a theorem that is the continuous image of a connected set is connected the proof is easy suppose we will prove by contradiction suppose y is not connected yeah or let us simply say let v be a set subset of v which is non empty assume v is open and closed then what should i prove then i should prove to prove v is all of y yeah okay let us try to do that okay suppose v is not y right now let's look at f is a continuous function let's look at f inverse of v since f is continuous and v is open this is open where in x and since v is also closed remember we are assuming v is also closed therefore f inverse of v is also closed in x and what do i know x is connected and next can f f inverse b be empty no it's not empty yeah if it's not if, why for each x fx must be in somewhere yeah that you following because we are assuming v is not empty and o is on to suppose y belong to v and since f is on to okay there is an x in x so that o equal to fx therefore x belong to f inverse of v because the okay do you follow that okay this is a place where we are using f is on to yeah so x is connected f inverse v is not empty but i know f inverse v is both open and closed so what do i conclude therefore conclude f inverse v is all of x what does that mean that means give me any x in x then fx belong to v yeah you follow that right but f is on to since f is on to let y be in y since f is on to there exists x in x so that y equal to fx that means every y in y belong to v because you follow that for every x in x fx belong to v give me any y f is on to there is an x in x so that y equal to fx that means y fx must be in v that means y is in v but y is arbitrary what does it show it shows that y is a subset of v since v is a subset of y we conclude v equal to y so what do you conclude that therefore o is connected pause review proceed please go through the proof quickly this kind of detailed thing you may not see in textbooks so let's go through it again my many students problem is inverse images that's why i always use 
the criterion x belong to f inverse b if only if fx belong to b that is the mantra to deal with inverse images okay now let's look at let me look at a circle let me look at any circle okay for example I, x minus a whole squared plus y minus b whole squared equal to r squared so the idea I want to show is call this a circle okay a this is a subset of r2 okay I want to show a is connected so I want to show a is the image of a connected subset of r right now we have seen that if this set is not an interval it's not connected you understand therefore and we had also shown any closed and bounded interval is a connected subset of R so can you think of something here so you know that obvious thing is see this R is fixed right in R2 there are two coordinates R and theta coordinate here this R is going to be fixed if you want to call it capital R okay that is fixed therefore only theta therefore it's one variable so that gives me an idea what is the idea look at f from 0 to 2 pi to R2 what is the map f of theta equal to R okay a plus R cos theta if you want I forgot this and b plus r sin theta okay then all of you know the yeah f of 0 to 2 pi is the circle a and we also know this is con this is continuous therefore a is con connected we will see other proofs also of connectedness later okay please go through it quickly and I leave it as an exercise ellipse okay exactly similar use uh, polar coordinates you know how to write it in terms of polar representation of an ellipse so you should be able to think of a continuous map whose image will be this okay right okay right the next one parabola let me look at the parabola in the following fashion okay y equal to x squared the standard thing is y squared equal to 4ax that means x equal to y squared by 4a okay that also you can do but let me look at now look at the picture this picture can you think of this as a continuous image of a connected subset of r intuitively it should be clear what connected set i want to look at we know that r is connected with the usual topology of course connected subset of R right therefore what is the map I will think of f from R to R2 given by f of t equal to uh, y equal to x squared right therefore t comma t squared in the other case I will think of t going to if I take this map then I will think of this map as t going to t squared by 4a t okay and this is a map from f from r to r2 and this is continuous why it's continuous because you must have seen from r to r2 the function is continuous if only the component function that is f1 of t is t f2 of t is t squared they are continuous right therefore this is continuous and the image is the parabola therefore any parabola is connected okay and there are two degenerate cases like uh, okay non coincident parallel lines or coincident parallel lines or intersecting lines okay we will show this is connected this is connected this is not connected 
that this is connected is easy because you only have to take R going to itself essentially okay I will leave this exercise and these things you will see later again okay right if you have any problem you will look at it so what have we shown now so we have shown in R okay R is connected with usual topology and any subset any set which is not an interval is not connected and any interval of the form this is connected and we have shown that q r minus q z are not connected okay in r2 we have seen among non-degenerate conics okay circle ellipse parabola are connected whereas hyperbolas are not connected okay so that's all I want to show okay yeah. and suppose I take two parallel lines vertical lines okay let me take two vertical lines x equal to a and x equal to b the my subset yes is a subset of r2 r2 is set of all x y in r2 so that x is a or x is b so these are the two lines okay this is x equal to a this is x equal to b okay now I, I want to know the, whether this is connected will what do you think no I'm sure by now your intuition should be working because take C equal to a plus b by 2 the midpoint all right do you follow that yeah now suppose this is a C is the midpoint let me just uh, mark it again this doesn't look like that but anyway this is x equal to c so x less than c is this plane left to the left to the vertical line x equal to c and this is the plane this is x greater than c this is x less than c as we saw earlier you can show this is open set and again this is open set and its intersection with your s is either this line x equal to a or this line x equal to b therefore each one of them is a non-empty set which is both open and close it's not all of s therefore that's not connected you understood that very good and similarly suppose i take a line okay y equal to ax plus b okay that is the subset is set of all x y in r2 so that y equal to x plus b I know, let's assume a is not zero right okay this is a line straight line okay I claim this is connected why is it good looks it looks as good as a line yeah so how do I prove that by using again continuous function let us look at f from r to r2 okay so t going to t plus a t plus b so this function is continuous and f of r is the line yes therefore s is connected okay so go through these examples 
so essentially i want to because just to general na connectedness alone is not enough okay that's why i wanted to give examples of subsets of r and r2 which are geometrically occurring so that i should know whether they are connected or not connected hopefully this gives you some intuition go through it it's a very small lecture short lecture but go through it and the next thing we will look at an important characterization of connectedness in terms of functions see functions are very useful tools to do any kind of thing sets are somewhat you know difficult to deal with okay because then geometry comes you have to break it and see how it they patch up various kinds of stuff okay there are a lot of things in the case of measure theory you have to see measurability various kinds of problem okay in the case of formal vector analysis thing you have to see how they patch up properly all kind of problem whereas functions are wide them so it's a 20th century's trick to reduce set convert the problems which involve set theory okay into problems involving functions which are somewhat easier to handle you may not believe me okay but just take it on faith okay you will see that okay we will meet again